dick in this bitch, uh No, we full attack in this shit, uh You know the full Mac came equipped Yo, 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 what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast Where we always keep it 100 I'm your host, Harrison Yes, 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 back in effect Sorry for the little break Y'all know how it goes, uh, busy, busy, busy week I was slam, slam, packed Um, had to do some traveling Had to do some moving And, uh, just could not get that episode out like i tried tried to move it luckily um i did kind of get the podcast and stuff clips and everything out but just could not try to shake and move like i wanted to mainly because um, i actually had something planned for this episode today so um i did not just want to kind of just put out anything for this just not my usual shake and bake of just coming on here doing my top topics and spills and stuff i actually wanted to make sure that everything was done right for this one and just not kind of pushed and rushed out just so i can make my weekly schedule so um it's enough episodes it wasn't people people weren't gonna wait long i'm um, getting this on tuesday so sorry i made y'all wait but i did put the last one on, i think on saturday so like i said it wasn't too long of a wait but i am back today holding the mic today so uh if that's where y'all see it i'm not gonna be trying to move too much i'm gonna try to keep it to where the volume and everything is good but everything is good today tired did a lot of a lot a lot of driving went to banks's baby shower over the weekend congrats to them um that's his business here but they are welcoming in a baby so they posted it well actually i guess he posted like i can say a little luke luke bryson banks uh i've come to notice that baby showers are a girls event i notice a lot of people when want the guys to celebrate the baby showers but i don't really know what y'all want us to do uh banks had a good baby shower but it's kind of like what what are the guys to do because i've seen some videos where ladies try to like masculine up the baby showers for the guys but it's kind of like do they really all kind of buy in or what but in all in all it's just not an environment created for or meant for guys and even if your friends are actively turning up baby showers are just for women i mean even at the one i had like it was still like you could try to like involve the guys in it but it's still like something you feel like yeah there's some women shit but it was still fun. I had fun seeing my brothers. I had fun seeing Torm, uh, Stoff, Banks, everybody celebrating. It's just, I like when baby showers bring camaraderie and people together, you know? So I do like that aspect of it. Um, I think that part is probably the most important part. If you are going to have baby showers and men are involved, at least you get to be around your friends and your family and stuff. So that was, that was probably the best part. It was a lot of driving, though, um, turned around into like a day trip i want to say because i went from here to the huntsville then back to va between like saturday to sunday morning so it was like a good turnaround work tired as a bitch but you know i made it happen i mean once you kind of like hit the road is is like I'm in the zone. It's like when you get off the road, that's when things kind of like I I hit the tiredness. And then that's when it kind of goes down. But thankfully, everything went good. No smoothness. Um, Let's go ahead and kick it off. Let's go ahead and kick the show off. Like I said, I left y'all waiting. So, um, like I said, we usually start it off. um, What do we start? Start start off with like a little reflection. I know last week was kind of like a weird week for me. Um, Mainly just from coming from a stance and it's like I said, we do our reflection, at least my reflection from it. Um, just kind of, I had a talk with myself, just kind of wondering, like, what's the next chapter in my life going to be? And I hear people saying this, like, all the time. And, you know, with the mega millions coming, 1.2 billion people always say, you know, give me that much money. I don't care what you do or well, what is I, you know, I work wherever you could walk on my face every day. You pay me a certain amount of money and. I had kind of had like a just a moment at work to where like I just got like super super frustrated like you know like that teary eyed frustrated like because and it was so small of a moment it's just because 
Um, in March, I had 10 years in the military. Longest job I've ever had. And I know for, like, the last couple episodes, I have been talking about, like, my rank and stuff. And still waiting to go through the process of, like, actually wearing it on my uniforms, even if I've already gotten it. And I, as it was coming through, there is this process of them going through the ceremony. But mine just happens to get held up. And some of the questions they were asking, it wasn't anything, like, major or discrepancy written like it wasn't like crazy especially for where I work at now but it's just been an error or a hiccup from where I'm working on this particular instance and what I had been kind of like just going through with my head and what I've been dealing with is just it was kind of like my last straw mentally just kind of like what the fuck else and what I had been sitting through was basically just in nine, almost 10 years, there has not been one professionally job wise, not one special moment in the military that I can honestly say has been positive professionally. Like some people, if you talk to plenty of people, all the places they've been, they have had one place to where they could be like, this place is good. I work under this uh, uh, leadership under this management and they put me on this path for this. They put me on this success role or I loved working here or this place was hard, but thankfully I did this and that. Oh, well, yeah, I promoted and I had this moment. Like I have no positive moments of any special achievement that's come in the last 10 years. And even this, it's kind of like I made it. I've ranked up both ways that you can rank up and. I just feel that like everybody has a story <laughs> positive and I have none professionally. I have good stories in the military with people, but I don't have anything positive. And so now I'm coming like at an impasse, you know, I'm, my contract is getting up, which will be at my 10 year mark. And it's like, now I'm like, do I want to, why, why, why am I signing this? You ready to redo this again? You know, just because I'm at the halfway mark and I'm close to retirement. Like what? Because they pay me a good salary because I got a check guarantee because they're offering me a signing bonus of a particularly high amount of money. Like, what is it? What is it worth? And so, you know, I just been kind of just in this like mental hell, like where, OK, cool. They pay my bills. Yes. Yeah, put me way better than I have. But I feel like when people I feel like I'm in a, a relationship where I'm getting abused all the time, like. I'm not happy at the job. I don't get any pleasure from the profession professionally from the job. I feel underappreciated at all turns. Like um, I'm tired of busting my ass unnecessarily because there are roadblocks put in that aren't needed, but are put in there specifically to barricade me from getting where I need to go. And all the while, there are people that have the same um, experiences as me in the Navy. And at least at one point, they have something positive to say about anywhere they work. And I have none. And with this most recent one, I was just kind of like, it was just kind of fed up. And like, I'm just like, how much more? Like, what is it? Like, can I have one moment to where I could just be like, I left Nashville for what? I, I'm, I'm missing events in my family's life for what? Like, I'm not, I'm not there to see my friends for what? I, I left my son for what? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I put up with so much bullshit for what? Like, what am I doing it for? And another thing that kind of frustrates me is the podcast has gone great. Three years. Um, and it's hit plights that are way more than I thought would happen in the short time it has. But podcast isn't booming like that to where I could leave it, which kind of frustrates me more. And I have degrees and stuff. I could leave the military, but as I'm kind of like, I don't need the military. I could leave the military if I want to. But realistically, I am kind of like at that point to where. Is it the best move at the moment? 
I don't know. And I just don't know what am I signing up for? You know, why am I doing four more years? What is it? Because they're going to give me more money than the other opportunities. And I'm just like, it's one thing to be in the podcast game and doing what you're doing. And you don't know how you're doing it, but you're steadily growing with no guidance and there's nobody to show you. But to be in the military, because in the podcast game, at least there, I don't know. There's nobody ahead of me that I could go to and be like, hey, show me the way, be my mentor. This It's kind of like I expect not to. Um, I expect to forge my own path, but in the military, it's plenty of niggas that outrank me. It's plenty of people that could go and do. Um, or I'm sorry, it's plenty of people that can go and show me or help me do anything. Yet, I have to constantly, 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 constantly pick my bootstraps up per se and then just forge through the fire and I just think it's kind of like just exhausting 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 and I see why I've had to be so vengeful because I wouldn't have made it I would have cracked but I'm just I just don't like it like I don't like the man that I've become because of this I've turned myself into a a not vengeful not a vengeful person but i just i feel like i gotta be on 10 all time you know what i'm saying like i I can't because i have to capture every opportunity out there because if i don't there's going to be nobody else out there to give me an opportunity from what i've been through because i've seen that i'm not getting put in positions to succeed with any type of help, I have to go do it myself. And just with this instance, I just feel like 10 years is a lot of my fucking life to just be working somewhere and not be happy. So I asked y'all, you know, you don't have to, you can't answer it now because it's a recording, but how long is enough to where you just be like, bro, I've had it with this shit, you know, like, and I've just been kind of rambling, like, do I just say fuck this shit? And like take the chance on the show Like give it my all You know like put it all into it But you know part of me gets frustrated That the show hasn't taken off Because I got a family I got a house note I, mean, I got a house I got a car notes I got, a, I got a family you know what I'm saying I can't just be irresponsible You know that's kind of the thing that kind of Is the for some, that's kind of like thing what happens when you when you make it, when you start getting older in life you just can't make reckless decisions and i am just kind of like realistically it's not smart to just try to go out and tell yourself that fuck it i'm gonna take a chance because your bills don't give a fuck you know what i'm saying the world's not gonna stop because you want to take a chance but it's also like, how long do I stay somewhere that I'm not happy, you know? And so I just been kind of like there, like, I'm just like, enough is not enough. Like, it's no amount of money they can give me. It's just, I don't know. I just, that's just kind of like where I've been at for the week. Just kind of been sitting back, going through my head, like, why do I got to continue to be quote unquote cheated on or abused or this? And everybody else is just having some type of experience and I'm just like walking through hell because I don't want to be bitter. I've had good times here, but just like professionally wise, I've literally had to grind myself through everything and everything I've gotten is almost like I have to point and say, fuck you. And why? You know, so that's just kind of like where I've been at. Like, what's the next phase? Like, do I keep going and do I just stay because of the money? Or do I kind of take a chance? And it's like, even taking a chance is not that it's scary. Is it practical because of the lifestyle I live now? You know? Um, It's just questions. But I'm just kind of like, man, I'm not happy and I'm tired. And I'm really tired of this. And I'm, I'm just done. Like, I, I just... I deserve better. I deserve more as a person, not as money, you know, nothing. I just deserve something like this 10 years of my life. And I've seen 
more. I just deserve more. So that was kind of like my spill from there where I was just, it was really been sitting on my head like for most of the week. Um, I'll tell anybody here, you know, figure out what your limit is. I haven't figured out mine. I don't really have any advice for that because I'm still kind of battling it. But um, I will say find out what you deem is enough and put yourself in position. I will say if I do decide to do anything, like as far as extending, it won't be for nothing long and it will literally be for the transition of saying goodbye. Because I don't know if I have another 10 years of this shit in me. It will literally be like one to two years and that whole time will be to do the next chapter because I think at a certain point life isn't meant to money or not life isn't meant to be living to shouldn't walk into misery so that's why i feel on that um oh jimmy butler jimmy 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 butler jimmy butler so jimmy butler decided to go ahead and get his hair redone twisted up got the um fake locks and shit and i wonder because i i heard people say drake's hair was fake but i do wonder like is this gonna be the way i don't know if this is like the open door for like man weaves but i do wonder like is this is this like the phase and then is it really a problem like i don't i seen like the jokes on it but jimmy butler's hair didn't look bad y'all just knew it wasn't real like his hair looked like he could have had dreads like if you didn't know the actual length of it you would have thought he actually grew it out so I've seen like more and more people get it and it seems like it's been a little bit more accepting than I thought so I don't know that may be the wave um, we finally got Will Smith's apology and I was not upset with it I feel that it, it was exactly what it should have been authentic it was time taken out to think about it kind of like what I do at the beginning of these episodes I just kind of sit back and think and reflect on like you know what's going on and make sure that i am giving you something that's sincere and genuine and it didn't sound like it was a gimmick or anything written up hopefully they can work it out like he said i didn't even think about the relationship between him and tony rock like he said but hopefully they can work it out hopefully that nothing comes from this that's irreconcilable but i can understand if it does his questions were actual genuine questions that weren't just fabricated or handpicked. And you can see that he genuinely, genuinely has been remorseful over this. I think the one thing that stood out from his apology was that when he said his one trauma is disappointing people. So the fact that he has seen from the world that he's disappointed them, I think this has probably affected him the most. But i think that what was best for will was best for everybody else that he's human and he makes mistakes and so now that you he's seen that he's made a mistake and that he's okay and he can go on and live i think that everybody else can do the same thing and i think that we can see his life i think if any comic you know because people saw him as a superhero if any comic um that you've read there are times when the superhero loses that means they made a mistake they didn't win so they did something to not win but they come through and they went on so i thought his apology was good it's crazy how people say it's a little too late or or they acting like it was so long it was in april that it happened like literally i think what april 1st so um i don't get why niggas think that chris rock owes jada an apology when jada didn't go out there and get hit by anything except a joke um but i thought will smith's apology was cool i thought it was great um well needed and i'm glad hopefully we can put this to rest um i seen that deshaun watson got his six games really surprised with that i thought they were going to give him about half the season or so um, i'm actually surprised that um that he got only six games i thought he was probably going to get eight but the way i have been hearing people say so when i see people say indefinite i've learned to accept that indefinite probably means not that many goddamn games by the nfl they just want the words to seem like it is a lot because when they said antonio brown was going to get suspended indefinitely he was suspended for like four or five games for when he had that situation of sexual assault or something like that when he was with the patriots right before they cut him so once they kind of said indefinite i was like um deshaun's coming back so 
I talked to uh, some people smashing all them. Uh, the Ravens are now probably number three in that division. If Jacoby Brissett can just get them three wins, it's a win for the for the Browns. But glad to see Deshaun's back. He set out the whole season last year, and it makes sense now why the Browns did that deal. I feel like they already knew he was going to play this year. It's the only reason why he gets somebody $230 million front load most of this year just in case but i'm glad this saga is kind of finally over um and shannon and them said something on skip and shannon undisputed that two juror grand jurors had decided not to push it so despite what everybody said in public opinion and all this like they had all the evidence so if it was really something that he did or they really had some type of case to push it like they did r kelly and all these other people uh the chick that was um not Harvey Weinstein, but uh, um, Epstein or whatever his name was, they pushed it up, grand jurors. So it wasn't. It got kicked back twice, and they just settled for money outside of what the actual um, indictments were. So obviously they didn't see something to go. Um, I feel like once you get labeled something, whether you're innocent or not, they're going to agree with whatever they seen, um, whatever they seen fit. I noticed a lot of people were all on Tory Lane's head and longer and longer this case is drawn out between Meg and Tory Lane's people are kind of starting to call Meg corny and call Meg a liar uh, when initially that happened everybody was on uh, on Tory Lane's neck for you know popping old girl in the foot so it's just kind of like one of them things you just got to live through it and people in this microwave era people will forget what happened so RIP Bill Russell and he passed yesterday so that is truly a great 11 nba titles um had the bill wrestle award he was not only a great basketball player fucking dominated but he also did a lot for he was the first uh, african-american uh coach he was let me make sure i said that right because don't want to um say anything wrong as i'm giving somebody their flowers but um definitely a pioneer of the game lost let me get some of these highlights so the bill russell highlights part of the first major college lineup to start three black players helped lead a walkout of the boston celtics players in 1961 after the black celtics players were rejected refused service from a hotel was part of the first nba lineup to start five black players in 1964 the first black head coach of any north american pro sports team <clears throat> supported muhammad ali's refusal to be drafted Received the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2011 and championed the NBA protest of support of social justice in 2020. Like I said, he also has a Bill Russell Award, which is the Finals MVP award that is given at for the most valuable player in the NBA Finals. He's won 11 championships, was never uh, the leading scorer or anything on his team, but won Finals MVP for all those championships. It is very, very tough loss. It is very, very sad loss, but NBA but um his impact will forever be felt um it is always terrible seeing kobe give his condolences or give his remembrance to somebody because then you got to really just remember that kobe is gone so football season is really about to start up i've been looking at the the titans training camp Traylon burks looks okay i ain't gonna say nothing too much um roger mccrary looks okay I'm not really going to say too much about anybody in training camp other than the tight end that we got. He looks really good. But um, everybody else, I've just I've just learned not to buy into training camp because when it, it don't really matter until you can play wins and losses. So that's when it really matters. Uh, only thing I seen today was like, I guess Debo Samuels got paid by the 49ers and A.J. Brown said all of us basically got the same contract, yet I'm the only one traded. I love AJ, but whatever happened between them, we'll never know. I know AJ stopped communicating with them. I know that they offer him a low number, don't know when. I know that he demanded a trade after the first offer. And I know from his tweets, AJ is emotional. I'm a miss AJ. I hate that it couldn't get done. I think the Titans were genuinely sad that they could not keep him because everybody in Tennessee loved AJ. But it is August the 1st. It's time to move on, bro. Like, fuck it. We can't do nothing about it. We can't. You know, you balked at the first offer and, like, bounced. 
I think they did something because they didn't want to cause any drama. They could have probably jumped too early. You probably was going to get your money. I mean, look at everybody the Titans have paid in the last five to six years. Harold Landry, Kevin Byer, Taylor Lewan, uh Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry, Jeffrey Simmons about to get paid. But because it got to this spectacle, it didn't. And they traded you. Like, it's time to move on, bro. Like, I get it. And I guess I'm going to harass you. But, like, that tweet was all on you. So, it is what it is. I'm ready to go from there. All um, right. So, I know I haven't done a guest in a minute. So, I thought, what better guest to have than the multi-talented, multi talented, multi faceted, very own? I know him very well. So, this should be very good chemistry. Isaiah Harrison. So, could y'all welcome on my son, please, everybody? Yes. Come on in. Isaiah Harrison. Oh, okay. Go and have a seat. So, uh, Isaiah, welcome to the 8 More Than 92 podcast. I appreciate you coming on. How are you today? I'm good. Okay. So, um, tell everybody, how's your summer been? It's been pretty good. Recent, really, I've been staying in the house, but I also, I used to take walks. For, like, I used to take walks in the beginning of the summer, and that was, like, fun parts, because I, I love to... Uh, Explore the little neighborhood and see some stuff that wasn't there at the beginning, which was like in what year did we move here? 2020? I don't know. But I like to see stuff that, like, when new people move in and how some, how they're building townhouses and and all these other stuff. Like, there's a big pond in the beginning, like, it, when you first enter our neighborhood, which wasn't there before. And I was like, oh, when did they build that? But I guess I wasn't paying attention that much. Also, between that time, my cousins came, and we played this Martin game with my grandma, too. And it was really funny. My, um, they're twins, so the second oldest, I'd say, yeah, she did this very funny impression. I missed them. Oh, you are going into the eighth grade. One year from high school. Are you really excited about the eighth grade coming up, and do you have any fears going into high school? Tell me about the eighth grade first. Eighth grade, I'm I'm chill about it. I'm I can see I guess you say I'm pretty. I'm not all that ex like I'm not enthusiastic about it, but I'm also not in, not not enthusiastic about it because I would like to meet some new people because I'm recently moving. So it would be fun to see some new faces and to do some new work because my old school wasn't that much as I work there, and I'm. What was the second question? So with high school coming up, Isaiah, right after eighth, are you excited to go or do you have any fears about it? I don't, um, I have no fears about high school. Um, I guess my only, I guess, concern sort of would be is that <laughs> I'm just not ready to sort of grow up yet, but I'm also ready, you know, to grow up at the same time. It's just... It just feels so weird because it seems like yesterday I was only like seven or six playing in the backyard with my cousin and stuff and doing fake imaginary land and all this other type of weird things we used to do. And I guess the only thing I can say about high school is I'm going to be prepared as I'm prepared as I'll ever be. So what are some of your favorite subjects in school? Reading. I didn't like math before, but I've I've recently um, taken interest in math because of my son, my um, last math teacher. She was really fun. She really helped me understand some stuff I didn't get before. Shout out to math. Shout what was the teacher's name? Miss Davis. Shout out to Miss Davis. Shout out. Um, I still don't like science. I'll forever hate that subject. Ooh, and I love social studies. I really do like social studies a lot. I'm really good at it. I'm very good. Matter of fact, I was I was almost an honor roll student. Almost is an honor roll, though. So, what are some of your hobbies that you like to do? Um, I mostly spend time on my phone, but when I'm not doing that, I do like to go out for walks with my dog and play with my brother. I like to play games with you sometimes when we do when we do play games 
I also like to watch you play games too, because it's fun. <laughs> it's funny to see your reactions. <laughs> the way you rage, it's so funny. We'll cut that out in editing. So, Isaiah, what do you feel you do best? What are some of your best qualities, and what do you feel are some of your not so good qualities? Give me two of each. I'll start off with my not so good qualities. I have trouble when talking to somebody. I have trouble looking them straight in the eye. I usually look up at the ceiling, floor, wall, or something. I don't like eye to eye contact. It's not for me. I can't do it. It was never for me. I also need to stop saying things when people didn't ask for it. Like if somebody asks me, the milk is for somebody else, and I say, well, I don't drink milk. I use it for cereal. I need to stop doing that stuff because it's irking. I know it's, it seems irking. I catch myself sometimes, but it's usually too late. I know it's what I do now. And I try, try to stop myself from continuing that cycle. My so good qualities is, like, I, I guess I'm pretty helpful. So, yeah, I'm pretty helpful. I like to help people. I, I really do enjoy spending time with my brothers and helping brothers and helping I can't say it right but I really do spend time playing with them and having fun with them and helping them with stuff that they can't do like Jarvis I I love to help him walk because it's so funny it's so funny when he <laughs> he tries to climb on the sofa and then he falls on his butt it's so funny. I'm also I'm, I guess you could say I'm pretty caring yeah you would say that when you want something yeah, yeah. But loving. Now I feel like you're reaching. All right. So tell people who don't know, like myself, older people, we have an older audience, right? So a lot of us aren't too much older than you, but tell us what it's like being a 13 year old, 14 year old, or just a teenager in 2022. It's, it's um, I guess you, it's nice, you know? If you have some social media, like if I if I'm really troubled with something I I don't really understand, like if I don't if I don't feel like comfortable enough for something, with something, I don't like feel comfortable to talk to like an adult because it'll feel, I feel like it'll be awkward. I can, like I guess you could say I could just go to some little platforms of social media, and just type or search like YouTube if I need help with something to do with my hair, or something to face wash which stuff I should use if I like have a certain type of skin I could go to YouTube and stuff like cause there's people that uh, there's people that have probably like the same hair problems or skin problems as mine or just social problems because uh, I in the beginning I was very shy and I wasn't outgoing at all And but I re- I guess you could say so it's quarantine and something and I've seen I guess I've I've grown out of the shell that I was before because, as you know, I was very shy. But now I'm not afraid to say what I think, and I, I think a lot. I do wonder, do you feel like now your generation of kids have more access to talking to people for mental health issues? Yeah, we do. Um, we, we can because the internet and stuff, if we're, like, really, if we need, if we're, like, seeking for help or wanting help, we can look online for certain things like certain websites certain communities certain functions whatever and those certain things can help us improve like especially if you're really down and depressed and deeps and stuff you can, I always I think you can really benefit from those so I feel like we have a lot more than you did back in the old 1800s do you feel like you're first off don't get don't get don't get knocked so, uh, <laughs> second off you know you, you i know right i don't care you'll get knocked on live tv uh do you know do you know who diamond is yeah from uh crime up knocking if you bucking just know that i'm ready to fight so i don't want to know do you feel like do you feel like you have the resources at home for your voice to be heard or do you feel like um you're able to talk to the adults in your uh immediate family for if you have a problem or do you feel like there is issues and you have to withhold it Mm, I wouldn't say so 
if I was, like, no, I feel like you guys are pretty approachable to talk to. If there's something that I guess will bother me or something about myself, or if there's, like, nothing really, there's nothing really bothering me now, but I know if there's, like, those once in a blue moon times that I'm really thinking about something, I feel like I could talk to you. I could talk to you both, all three of you. And, yeah, you guys are pretty, well, so not all, just certain two. But, um, <laughs> um, yeah, I feel like I could talk to you. Do you want to ask you? What are some of your dreams and aspirations when you become older? What do you want to do when you become an adult? I would like to become an actor, sort of. I've I've always wanted to become an actor. I want to be famous. Why you, you probably won't get that line it's from horror movie, but um, <laughs> well, chuckling at that. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but I would, but if not an actor, because. Acting doesn't always work out. You have to have a backup plan. I would like to become a sales person or an architect. Architect, yeah, an architect or an actor. Those are probably my main two. Or a lawyer. I mean, I remember I looked at lawyer stuff. Like Matt Murdock. It's a comic reference for these kids who don't read. Daredevil. Anyways, um, yeah, that was it. Okay, so uh, what's your so? Because Marvel's cool now. The ones who don't read it ain't. Uh, so where do you see yourself going to college? Do you see yourself going at all? Where do you want to go to college? Mm, Tennessee, TSU, probably. Okay, what makes you want to go there? Because I like TSU, and also the D. Uh, I was just trying to make a reference, but the OG went there. He's talking about me, alumni. So, um, so Isaiah, I did want to ask, you know, before we wrap it up, one thing I do hear from a lot of people is it must be very difficult having me as a dad, seeing that I am very active in the sports. And I tell people all the time, the funniest thing about me and you is I know I tell them all the time Isaiah does not like sports and I'm very active in the sports. So I wanted to ask you, is it difficult having me as a dad? Every day I wake up here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It, it's not difficult. You don't pressure me to do sports because you know. You will have me like try some stuff because I, I usually sit down to things I'm not open to. But oh, I usually say no to things I'm not open to. But you get me to try as much stuff as I can. If I don't like it, I don't like it. So you don't really pressure me to do certain, like be sport, be sporty people what is hard about being around me tell tell everybody what it is your competitiveness literally if you do not win you will keep that same game going for hours and hours and hours days at most you're just really competitive man when you lose it's it's you keep that game playing until you win Literally, is it like that with sports or is it like that with anything? Literally, anything you say, if you're not first place, then you're nothing at all. I'm just kidding. It's if you're not first, you're last. Shout out to Ricky Bobby. So, what is one of the funniest win or lose stories or game stories about me that you could think of? Okay, so who is that guy who's like bald kind of looks like Steve Harvey but darker who has that like goatee sort of yeah he came he came over here he comes over here wears those hats oh Trice yeah Trice so it was Trice and that other guy who used to who was staying the other guy like yeah Roderick me you or I don't think he was there but we were playing Uno me you Mrs. and Trice and <laughs> Trice won like for the very last game because it was like getting around 12 and you you hadn't won or I think you won once but you wanted to win again and so as soon as Trice won you said all right we're gonna play this S word again <laughs> and that's what we did for the next 25 minutes did I win though 
you did not. I ended up winning. That's probably how you know it's lying. But uh, so, but for me, as far as everything else, like, do you feel like pressure or anything? Does it bleed into like our personal relationship? Does it like? Does it make it? Um, like hard to be around me in general, like because of how I am, like competitive wise, or like, do you feel like you don't add up, or do I make you feel uncomfortable, or anything like that? Mm, no, nah. you don't pressure me to do stuff, for real. Like, if I don't like it, like if I really just don't like it, you just you don't pressure me to keep doing it. You do say give it a chance or something and then usually sometimes I do end up liking it but not that much but I end up liking it like in general so you you don't affect our really your competitiveness to always win um doesn't really affect our relationship but you answered the last part without me having to ask it um I appreciate it. No, because if a lot of people that know me know that I am competitive and I don't like to lose, but so a lot of people think that I take that same attitude into parenting. But um, as you can see, I it's two different me's. But I did want to ask you firsthand: is if I was the same way? Like, it's you have the free range. If you didn't want to do it, then you definitely didn't have to do it. Um, I think this is a good place to wrap it. I want you to give the the honor of signing us off. You know, if you want to, you know, beatbox it or whatever, you know, this is the 8 More Than 92 podcast. Do the honors of signing us off. I'm going to give it to my man, Tig. Go ahead. Subscribe, like, comment, share. Make sure on 8 More Than 92 podcast is everywhere. Radios, 892. TV, 892. Eight more than nine two. Sorry, um, your friends, your friends, um, your friends. Billboard eight nine eight more than ninety two. Your monitor eight more than ninety two. Your uh, computer system eight more than ninety two. If eight more than ninety two isn't anywhere you see, then what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing. Eight more than ninety two podcasts. Signing off. Oh, bye. Yo, this has been another episode of the 8 Morning 92 Podcast where we always keep it 100. I'm kicking it with my main man, Tig Master. Another episode, I appreciate y'all kicking it with us, all the other podcasts. I shout y'all out. Usually I can't get the names right. But I appreciate y'all gang ganging it with us again. We gonna holler at y'all later. Peace. In this bitch, uh, know we full attack in this shit, uh, you know the full Mac came equipped, uh.